My name is Paul Rodden, and welcome to the Hydrogen Podcast. Switching gears a little bit, could you highlight some of the innovative solutions OPW CES has developed for liquid hydrogen refueling? We are now mainly focused on getting the nozzle and the receptacle to work very robustly and repeatedly with liquid hydrogen. We have a larger spectrum of components we can provide. We work with the entire system, but several of the technical criticalities go into the coupling process. So we are implementing a number of redundancies to the system that are supposed to eliminate all the known variables and external factors that could reduce the system performance. We also focused on, uh, for instance, a low force engagement nozzle with gradual sealing process to prevent some of the operator mistakes. So if they're Mm -hmm. trying to operate the nozzle and it doesn't fit on the right position, so they keep forcing it, we are trying to get rid of all these potential variables. So after the engagement is done, basically the operator walks away he or she presses a button to start the fueling process and that's it. So like I said before, you know, we learned a lot with the LNG refueling process that it alone gave us a ton to to prepare for, you know, for the hydrogen economy. Now the the liquid hydrogen uh, system brings another layer of technology that from the outside, the good news is that it looks very simple and intuitive, but there are many safety checks and automation that will reduce the risks on a, on a day-to-day operation. So, Again, we are trying to reduce friction, keep the same, let's say, cultural mindset and make sure it works properly with anybody operating that device. So then how do Acme Cryogenics and Rego enhance OPW CES's capabilities in the hydrogen sector? Yeah, that, no, that's an excellent question. Our main advantage is to participate in most of the hydrogen value chain. So gradually, we can integrate systems and, and benchmark a variety of different projects. So we can exchange a lot of knowledge internally. Uh, one example, we cover aerospace projects and then automotive and then infrastructure and so on and so forth. So we accumulate a lot of different experience with those projects. And the other angle we can look at is we work with different liquid gases like oxygen, CO2 and helium that puts us in a unique position to keep innovating as we go and and keep this exchange of information and, and, and technical learning across the projects that we work on. What role does OPW CES play in ensuring the reliability and efficiency of hydrogen refueling infrastructure? Yeah, it, it's a combination of collaboration with main players and stakeholders while making a difference in reducing friction points, like I mentioned, in product design and operations, keeping it simple as possible while maintaining safety and reliability as table stakes, let's say. And one highlight to that, not to go into more more of the boring details, but uh, we also design protected our solution to work independently of the final fueling station process, mm. meaning we, we offer compatibility with, you know, either a purging process or a vacuum process to fully isolate the hydrogen from conduction, convection, and and radiation. So we can adapt uh, depending on the way the stations will be set up. We also plan to evolve our solutions to protect the main requirements, let's say while serving markets like uh, Europe and US. We hope they will have very similar requirements, but in reality, there are some uniquenesses that might drive a few tailored uh, approaches. I'd really love to hear this. Can you share any success stories or case studies where OPW CES's solutions have made a, a real significant impact? So I can list you at least three different cases. One, like I mentioned, is the LNG refueling solution that I, I commented before. We are the leading system for the European markets. And more recently, we launched a new version of our product called Regomac that is coming online with a big European customer. The second one is the aerospace development for launch pads. So we are facilitating uh, to establish new tailor-made infrastructure projects with vacuum insulated pipes and and valves that adapts to the newer rockets requirements as well as evolving markets for short launch windows. And finally, you know, the third one is our Hydromac, which is our hydrogen refueling solution for heavy duty trucks. So those are, some of the three we can brag about, let's say. Yeah, very excited yeah. about those. Going and looking at the future, 
What do you see as the future trends and opportunities for the hydrogen industry, particularly in heavy duty transportation? Right, that, that's a, a, a good question. So more from a short term perspective, Paul, the goal is to activate the economy. And, and by saying this, I mean, to focus on a, having a stable technology at a fair cost with a growing infrastructure. There's a frequent discussion between EVs versus hydrogen. And in reality, hydrogen is more difficult to scale with the present production capacity and cost. No. But it's definitely the complementary solution to decarbonize the hard to abate sectors of the industry. So there is for sure an element of lending, uh, let's say the hydrogen hype into real life solutions. Yeah. And that is the transition we are working on to further enable other applications to achieve the zero emissions goals. Hey, this is Paul. I hope you liked this podcast. If you did and want to hear more, I'd appreciate it if you would either subscribe to this channel on YouTube or connect with your favorite platform through my website at www.thehydrogenpodcast.com. Thanks for listening. I very much appreciate it. Have a great day.